exams are just there to test the things you should know, and they're not there to catch you out. Um, uh, if I have done everything right, there's really, there should be no need to study. Like there won't be, you don't have to remember all this or learn some crazy formula. Oh, except you have to know how Gauss added up all the numbers from 1 to 100. Yeah, 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 but you've got a whole term to forget that. So you might want to study that again. Um, but other than that, uh, I don't think there's lots of stuff to learn. You just got to make sure that you are able to program. So probably the best practice you could do would be just to toddle through all the tube and lab exercises. And if you didn't do them, then have a whack at them and look at the solutions and think about them. And, and maybe set yourself variants of them. So think, oh, here's something to do something to a list. Oh, I'll think of another function to do something to a list. Now, if you want to see the sorts of things that um, are in the exam, uh, there's a link. I put a link on the homepage. It's been there all semester to the last time I set an exam for an equivalent subject like this, which was 2006. One nine one one. Has everyone seen that, that, is that exam? Has anyone seen that exam? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that exam should be a reasonable indication of um, of, of what the exam will roughly look like. Uh, some bits of that exam will seem extremely hard because that exam is exactly tailored to what they learned that year. So they had a major assignment on one particular thing. So there might be a couple of questions on that thing, and that would freak you out completely if you haven't spent much time on that particular thing. Uh, so, uh, how I set the exam normally is I look, I go through week by week of, of what we've done over the year, of the semester, and I try and allocate a roughly equal number of marks to each week. So, in this week we learned flow controls, there's a couple of simple flow control questions, you know, that's ifs and whiles. And this week we learned about integers and types and big endian and little endian, so there's some questions on that. This week we learned about pointers. And, and, and then there's some, also some questions on what I think are the big issues about things like what's good style. And, and that's not, not writing an essay. Oh, look at the exam and you'll see what it is. That might be, I show you some code and say, make some comments about the code. How could you improve it or something like that? The first question was something about variable names. See, that's a great question. I could say, you know, what's a good variable name in this particular context? And it might be a multiple choice. And normally, and I'm saying normally because I haven't yet written an exam. Um, and I'll probably be writing it over the next couple of days. Normally the exam goes something like it's in four parts. The first part is multiple choice, so you can get that over and done with pretty quickly. Uh, the second part, and they're worth roughly equal amounts each. The second part is short answer questions, uh, where you have to write like a sentence or something, and we don't want an essay. And uh, that's things like, what is, uh, why, what's an advantage of abstraction? Or why would you use a, what, why do we like functions? What's a good thing about functions? And you might say, functions give me code reuse. You know, there's four things. I went over, over, over. You know. um, uh, so the short, there's short answery sort of things like that. And then there's a, a easy programming questions, and then there's hard programming questions. Are the two other ones. And the easy ones are normally like we ask you to write a couple of simple little things, like simple lag exercises, and the hard ones are we ask you to uh, write some harder, but still not impossibly hard uh, questions that are like harder lab exercises. And we expect that the people who are going to get HDs will do the whole exam. And the people that are going to get Ds will do the first three parts and have an attempt at the, the last part. And the people that are going for credits or passes will only do the first three parts. And the people that are going not for credits or passes uh, will uh, you know, randomly attend another exam. <laughs> And we really do, there's never a trick, and, my, and I'll hopefully be there when you come out of the exam. I normally try and be physically present for the exam in case there's any questions. Um, and after the exam, when people come out, I'm always interested to know how the exam went. I'm always quite anxious to know how it went. And, and normally, the last couple of years, people have said things like, oh, that was all right, it was a fair exam, there were no surprises, gee, it was long, bloody rich. Right. And I say, yeah, I tried to make it short, but I kept sticking more in. So, uh, so my one problem is sometimes I do make it a bit too long. So I'm trying really hard to make it short. And I do get uh, people to check it. And anytime anyone says, maybe this is too long, or maybe it isn't, I always think, that means it's too long. And I, I throw something out. Um, but probably, just knowing me, I will try and squeeze a little bit too much in. But their questions should all be reasonably straightforward. And simple, except the last part, which will be double. Uh, Oh, that's all. On the, the question was, where are the weightings for the assessment? So how do you put all the assessment bits together to get the final mark for the course? That's on the subject info page that we talked about in the first lecture. Uh, on, the, on the home page of the course, there's something called subject info or course info. If you click on that, it'll give you a mark breakdown. Okay.
so that's about everything. Now, how are we going, guys? Are the cameras all set up and we're all ready to go? And everything? Okay, cool, cool. Um, and, oh, and I did have a general service announcement. I should, probably should have done that before we started recording. Uh, tutoring. You probably know if one of your tutors, if your tutor in this course seems quite young, that we do an unusual thing in this course, that we try and have a few second years tutoring each year. Um, because that keeps everything fresh, and also they've just done the course, and they are very closely aligned with how everyone's thinking, so they're very good at spotting when things are too hard, or too easy, or in the wrong order, or things like that. So we're now on the lookout for a couple of people to tutor next year. If you're interested, and what I do is I just ask the tutors at the end of the year, who do you think in your tutor group would make a good tutor? If you're interested in being a tutor next year, although it's unusual, please um, notice that you can be one for computing. We, we will um, look for them. And we'll take a few, only a few. I think this year we only took two. Um, uh, and we'll take many more to be consultants and things, and they'll feed into the year. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please do have, just have a brief chat with your tutor and tell them sort of why you're interested. The sorts of things we're looking for are, yes, of course you have to understand the course, but um, we sort of take it for granted that our tutors are technically um, very, very good. Uh, and really, that's not the final criteria we used to select them. But this year, it turned out they were all technically brilliant as well. Uh, uh, we really are for people who are, have an interest in helping other people, and who are good at communicating, and um, you know, who are, have a love of the subject. Okay, um, and also, uh, just completely randomly, uh, a person I know is looking for someone to tutor their child uh, in mathematics. So if you uh, are good at mathematics and would like to tutor a child who I think is like a 13-year-old girl or something like that uh, and live somewhere around <laughs> Tempe or something like that, then please let me know if you're a nice person. And I'll put you <laughs> with this lady who would like someone nice to tutor the child in maths. And preferably a girl, I guess. I mean, that'd be good if you're a girl who was good at maths and you were a tutor. That would be awesome. What a great role model for this girl. She'd see this awesome... Uh, but, but a guy would also be fine. <laughs> uh, all right, now, uh, we're sort of in the middle of two things. I'd like to finish one of them off before I return to talk about ethics, professionalism, and risks. This is really our last technical content. Have I shown you this magic trick before? Shh, shh, shh. Tell me if I've told you this one. The one where I write some columns on the board. One, have we done this? One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. You know this one? And here I write two, three, shh, and I skip four, five, and I write six, seven, and I skip eight, nine, and I write ten, eleven. You haven't seen this? How about you go to 12? Uh, well, that's a problem. Uh, I won't. And then the next one is uh, I go 4, and then I go 5, and then I go 6, and then I go 7, and then I skip 8, 9, 10, 11, and I write uh, 4, 5, 6, 7. What have I done wrong? And I skip. That doesn't look right, does it? It's not. It's supposed to look. Uh, 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 I think it just goes zero zero. I mean, it doesn't go in there at all. I mean, that's very confusing for me. And then um, maybe if we kept going for a while, it would make clearer sense. Maybe if I went a bit higher and I'll be went n uh, nine, thirteen, fifteen. That's probably a bit nicer. And then this would be ten, eleven, skip twelve, thirteen, and then I go fourteen, fifteen. And then this would be uh, uh, four, uh, zero, one, two, three, skip, and then four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then write twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and this one here would go eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now this is, um, and you can keep going with that pattern as long as you want. And, and, the reason uh, we do that, though, is blah, 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 forget the pattern. Um, someone just tell me, pick your favourite number, okay, that's in that thing there, and work out which columns it's in, and tell me which columns it's in. Uh, which is your favourite number? Oh, no, no, don't tell me that because I've got to guess that. I'm really tricky. What columns is it in? Uh, second. The second one, and no other one. Uh, well, that makes it too easy. 
It makes it too easy. Don't make it too easy. I like. Uh, I like. Uh, yeah. It's in the second and fourth. The second and the fourth. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Is it six? No. No. Oh, what did I do wrong? Uh, no, it's it's ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's ten. Thank you. <laughs> See, amazing. <laughs> Putting on this lab coat makes me fifty percent smarter straight away. And these glasses too. I think everyone should wear glasses. Okay, someone else. Tell me, wait. Yeah, which columns? The first and second is number three. Yes, well done. Okay. Uh, and someone else? The amazing Richard will never cease to astound you. Tell me the columns it's in. Uh, no, someone closer to the back. Uh, you, the guy, uh, yeah, with the stripy shirt. Zero and three. Uh, oh, zero and three, the first column and the last column. Yep. I like the way you count. Uh, uh, that would be nine. And to make it easier for me, because we've got this cons inconsistency, how do we number them now? One, two, three, four, five, or, or zero, one, two, three. The next person I pick, could you just tell me the numbers at the top of the columns rather than the column number? So, you, you. One and four. Five! Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and what columns are you thinking of? One and two. One and two. Uh, three. Yes. Uh, yes. Eight. Just column eight? Uh, eight. <laughs> uh, and yes. Two, four, eight. Two, four, and eight are fourteen. Yes. And uh, I don't want to give away this magic trick. Uh, yeah, 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 the guy there. Yeah, the curly with the curly. Yeah. Eight, forty-six. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. Oh, he's causing an overflow. But yeah, has everyone seen how it works? <laughs> this magic trick works by if you tell me the, the numbers at the top of the column, I just add those numbers up, and that tells me what column it's in. Amazing! Marvellous! How can that be? Someone tell me, how can that be? Magic. Binary numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah basically, uh, uh, if we're going to, we know these will be our binary, uh, if I'm writing a number, and this is my least significant digit, this is my second least, third least, and most significant digit, we have to work out what columns the things will be in. So what's the next digit going to be? 16. That's right. Now, what numbers add up to 16? Just 16. So I put that in the 16 column. And now 17. What numbers add up to 17? So that goes in the 16 column and that goes up. 17 and it goes in the 1 column. Does that make sense? And essentially it's because the representation for 17 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Yeah, so that tells me what columns it goes in. And all combinations fit nicely leveled out at the bottom because it's all possible combinations of 0, 1, 2. If you stare at that for a bit, you'll suddenly think, oh yeah, of course, that's binary numbers, that's how it works. Well, what I want to show you is something related to that. A very clever thing worked out by a guy called Richard Hemming, who's actually an astonishingly clever man. He worked out lots of clever stuff. You might remember him from such results as Hamming distance. Has anyone heard of the Hamming distance? The Hamming distance between two things is sort of how much you have to change to go from one to another. So one of my thesis students at the moment is looking at spelling checkers. And when someone makes a typo, she has to work out what word to suggest it should be the right word. And she looks through a dictionary and finds words which are close to the word they've misspelled. And by close is how many changes does she have to make to transform one word into the other? You know that game where you change words one letter at a time to make one? Yeah, so that's called the Hamming distance. How many changes you've got to make to go from one to another. He worked that out. He's a very clever man. But what I'm about to tell you now is Hamming encoding. Hamming encoding works like this. Here's my computer here. Um, this is a long time ago in the 70s, so here's me. <laughs> and here's your computer over here. And here's you. And we're talking to each other using a modem, which means we actually get a phone which is connected to some wires and eventually a headset that looks a bit like that. You probably don't remember, that's what phones used to look like. And we actually have something that clicks onto that. That clicks into it. Does that make sense? And this thing goes, hee hoo ha hee hoo and sends tones over the phone line because the phone could transmit audio for a while before it could even transmit data. So, and at the other end, these tones are played back into this sort of microphone-y thing here called a modem, uh, what's that? Uh, modulator, demodulator. So that now it's going to be demodulated, the sound is going to be converted back into zeros and ones, and it goes, oh, that means one, or, or you want a monk, or a banana, and <laughs> So now the data used to be sent very slowly across the country, across the telephone lines, that way with actually playing loud audio signals. 
and the other person having to decode it. But of course, the quality of phone lines was pretty crap. So random bits of noise could get on your phone line, and that would interfere with your um, transfer. So if I'm transferring 100 bytes to you, or 100 bits, say, even I've got to transfer 100 bits, that's 100 notes. Maybe there's a good chance that one of those 100 notes is going to get corrupted by some random noise on the line. So Hamming was interested in this problem. I've sent some um, 100 zeros and ones to you. Here's what I sent you. And you look that up, and that says, attack at dawn. But it's got a small Hamming distance. It's not far from this message, which means, send a bunch of roses to the communists. <laughs> or, attack at dawn. And I'm here at uh, Air Force One. We're about to launch. And I'm thinking, I wonder, you know, these two messages are very similar to each other. I, I wonder if a bit of noise changed one message into the other, which is right. And Hamming thought, well, we should have some way of telling. So, how can we tell normally if there's been a mistake in some bits? A parody bit. Now, uh, you guys, some of you at least, have done parody bits in your tutors. I know some tutors uh, didn't do them because they were out of time. Uh, let's, if I'm writing eight bits in a byte, let's suppose I'm only actually writing seven of them. Oh no, I'll write all eight. So that's my byte. Can you see that? It's eight bits long. That's the piece of data I want to send. But I want to know if that piece of data has been changed. So what I do is I count how many ones are in there, and I see if there's an even or an odd number of them. How many ones are there? Is it even or odd? Odd. I'm going to say I'm using odd parity. An odd parity means I always want an odd number of ones in every unit I send. So I'm going to say that look, unit looks pretty good. So I'm going to attach a parity bit to the end, and that parity bit's going to be a zero, because it already has an odd number of ones. And now I'm going to transmit 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Is that eight of them? Yes, it is. Uh, is that an odd or an even number of ones? Even. even. What do I have to put in the parity bit to make sure there's an odd number of ones? One. one. So one way of doing it is I could send eight data bits followed by one parity bit, or sometimes I did seven data bits followed by one parity bit. And the parity bit would make sure that the total sum was even or odd. So if I'm transmitting these nine bits to you, and a bit of noise comes along and changes one of the bits, what do you notice when you get this at the other end? It's wrong. You add it all up and you get an even number of ones. It's wrong. So you say, please reset. Something went wrong. How many mistakes can that withstand, by the way? One. Only one number of mistakes. Or an odd number of mistakes, yeah. The smallest number of mistakes that won't be detected is two. So we say this is an error detecting code, and it detect, it's got a Hamming distance of one. It, the good codes are all a Hamming distance of one apart. Uh, uh, sorry, two apart. So an error of size one won't land you on another correct code. You need to have an error of size two or more. Does that make sense? So this would be a reasonable way. This is sometimes called a check bit or a parity bit. All right, everyone's cool with that? Now, Hamming thought, aha, uh -huh, this is annoying because when you send the data, if there's something wrong, you have to send a message back saying resend. And then you've got to have some sort of protocol about how, specifying which things you need to resend and what was wrong. And you've got to go into this long, elaborate thing. And gee, that's hard and a pain to program. How much nicer if you can just get all this data and not have to ask for some of it to be resend? Like maybe you can't. Maybe it's the Voyager and it's too far away for you to communicate back to it or it'll take too long. Or it's a one, somehow you've got a one way channel uh, coming to you and you can't change the data. You can't ask for things to be resend. How could you send the data so it didn't have to be resent? He thought, wouldn't it be nice if we had a code that was not only error detecting, but it was error correcting? So if there was a mistake, we could see what the mistake was and we could fix it up so they wouldn't have to retransmit. So he came up with the Hamming code, named by Schumer after his dad, uh, which is a nice thing to do. And uh, I'm just looking for the eraser. Ah. Now this also works with an error disk. This is, will accept errors of size one. For bigger errors, uh, we need to use variants on this. But let's just look at the basic one. Solve errors of size one, because that's all we need. Here's what he did. He said, OK, we're going to send some bits. Let's suppose we're going to send 12 bits. Break it into chunks of four, so you can easily count which bit is which. I want to send eight bits of data, and I'm going to send four check bits along as well. So, 
Here's how I'm going to send the 8 bits of data along. I'm going to lo label all my bits, so that's bit number... Hmm. Hmm. Now I'm thinking about it, I'm pretty sure we want to label this bit number 1, which is a bit odd. Hopefully this will become clear. Let's label them like that. There are bits. And I'm going to put my message, my data, I'm going to put it in the bits that aren't double numbers. So I'm going to leave 1, and 2, and 4, and 8. I'm just going to leave that empty for the moment. And that's where I'm going to put my extra checking bits, my parity territory. So if I wanted to send the message uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Is everyone happy with that message? I will send it like this. 1, 1, what's it? O, O, 1, 1, 1, O. And let's decide our parity. Is our parity going to be even or odd? Well, let's say it's even. We've got an even parity. Do we? That's going to be simpler. My, each of these bits here is going to be, I'm going to have four different check bits. And they're not all going to check the same bits. Some of them are going to check some of the bits, and some of them are going to check some of the other bits. So then when I see the combination of which check bits are right and wrong, it'll let me pin down which of the data bits was wrong. Does that make sense? Because each of the data bits is represented by different combinations of the check bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask me if that didn't make sense. Why even you want me to say that again in different words? Yes. Okay. Uh, just say it again in different words? Yeah. So, with the example that I've rubbed out, stupidly, for normal even parity, we have eight bits of data, and how I'd work out the parity is I'd sum all of those eight bits together and see if the answer was even or odd, and I'd uh, um, set the parity bit here um, equal to that sum. 1 or 0, depending on what I got. So if it's sum to 1, I put a 1 in here, that would give me even parity. And if it's sum to 0, I put a 0 in here, because that would give me even parity. So essentially, you could say that this parity bit here was checking every one of the eight data bits. Plus itself, which is easy. Does that make sense? It's probably not eight of them, but imagine there are eight. Now, that tells me there is an error, but it doesn't tell me which one there is. But what if I had two data bits? And one checked them all. And, uh, one checked everything except the first two. And the other one checked the first three. Does that make sense? So I'm having two data bits. Let me stick an actual number in so we can see what number I'm recording here. Uh, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. So this parity bit here checks these guys. So one, two, three, there's an odd number there, so I'll put an odd one in here. And the sum of that and all the ones it checks should now be zero, should be even number. And this parity bit here checks these two guys. So what should it be? Oh, the first three. Ah, so what should it be? Zero, because the first three have two ones, an even number of ones, I'm doing even parity, so I don't need any more ones. So if I was transmitting with two check bits like this, notice what happens. First of all, if this one goes wrong in transmission, bit of a bit of a random noise, and this gets changed to a zero, this check bit's correct, but this check bit's wrong. So what does that tell you? Which one, not only is it wrong, you know roughly which one it is. Which one roughly is it? We know it's not the one they're both checking. It's not the one they're both checking. It's not the one that's being checked up here. It's got to be one of the first two that's wrong. What combination of um, errors would tell... Is there some way you can work out exactly which one was wrong? Yeah, the third one. If the third one was wrong, that would be interesting. Because if the third one was wrong, let me just change that to a zero, then the parity, the check here and the check here would fail. So you know not only is it one of the first six that's wrong, but it's well, the last six that's wrong, but it's also one of the first three that's wrong. And assuming we've only got one error, you have two errors that we start, but assuming we've only got one error, that the error rate's really low, like say one in a million going to give us an error of one in a thousand. So we're not expecting two in any five. Then that would tell us exactly which one was wrong. Yes? 
What Hamming sat down is he looked at that and noticed that. He thought, I wonder if I can find a cunning way of allocating check bits to groups of digits, so no matter the groups of bits, so that no matter which bit was wrong, the combination of check bits would narrow it down to exactly one. Yes? And that's what he did. And he used exactly the trick we did up here. So he's going to say the number one check bit, he's going to check everything that's in the first one. The number one check bit checks um, uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. I wish I had lots of different colours here. Oh, I do. Oh, oh, it's one of those days when all your wishes come true. I can't believe I blew that wish. <laughs> Think about it now. I could have wished to have a sausage on my nose or all sorts of things. <laughs> okay, come in. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Um, so, uh, this one's going to check with blue. He's going to check that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. And which one's number two going to check? No, no, not all the evens. All the ones that have <laughs> all the places that have the second bit set in their representation. So which numbers have the second bit set? Uh, uh, let me just write some binary numbers here in case you've forgotten them. Uh, I'm going to write all the binary numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, what's the binary number for 1? 0, 0, 0, 1. What's the binary number for 2? 0, 0, 1, 0. What's the binary number for 3? 0, 0, 11, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. It's long, isn't it? 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Just saying random zeros and ones here. But the right thing is actually happening on the board like magic. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on. Okay, so which ones are checked by bit number two? Here's bit number bit number one. Which numbers does that check? That checks 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Checks 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Cool. Bit number two, what does that check? You notice it's the same I did over here. You see, it's the same. I mean, you're going to have to stare at it for a while to see what's going on. But it's the same. It's the same. That's how I wrote the second column here. So it's going to check what two throws. I've just stuffed them up, haven't I, by like scribbling them out. Uh, make sure you do bring different colored chalk into the exam. You'll need that. <laughs> so let's do... What's that? <laughs> you thought it was provided? Ah, you pull it with a classic blunder. Yeah, I don't know how many students sit there just sobbing in the exam because I don't have chalk. <laughs> All answers must be in chalk. <laughs> you got to read these stuff. Okay, so then uh, those two and those two and those. Is that cool? And the next one, four, what does that check? Well, that checks. Four, five, oh. What's that? Four, five, six, seven. Thank you. Six, seven. Does it check anymore? Fourteen, four, twelve. No, uh, does it check twelve? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, it checks twelve. Thank you. And the last one, uh, I'll do use white for that, say. So, uh, checks uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've made it quite, quite messy now, haven't I? I thought that was going to be beautiful and clear. But um, vaguely right, does that sort of make sense? Right, let, what's that? I've done something wrong? 2, 3, it should be then... I was toying with whether I should show you Hamming coding or Buckland coding. Um, Buckland coding doesn't work, so it's not as good. So. <laughs> I think we'll stick with Hamming coding. Thank you. Is that right? All right. Now, that very confusing looking scribble down there is very confusing, but you guys help me fill in these numbers. In fact, I'd like everyone to do that. So just as an exercise now, fill in the check digits 1, 2, 4, and 8. Do you know how to do it? Wave your hand if you don't even have a clue as to what I'm asking you to do. Okay, here's what I want you to do. But if, I'll fill, we'll fill in one together. One checks this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. 
So let's count how many ones are in those positions. We want to end up with an even number of them. So how many of them? One, two, three, uh, two. Oh, what am I counting now? I'm doing the blue one. Sorry, I speak the wrong color. It's very confusing. Okay, so one, two, two, three, four. I want an even number, so what has to go in here? Zero. Does that make sense? See if you can fill in the other one. And then you'll have done a hamming encoding. So do that quick, because this is a great exam question. I can do it. Do it, make sure you use chalk. And call out, uh, uh, I'll give you like 30 seconds. People aren't doing it, they're just staring. Oh, you're doing it in your head. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Do it in your head, is that the fine? But do do it, because if you just watch it and you don't do it, you don't learn as much as if you actually do it. camera and not on my mic? Oh, okay. I'm going to have to start using semaphore now, guys. Why MCA? How do they do the M? I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm impressed you know, but I just realised I'm not going to do It's not as though I'm actually going to be filmed and put on YouTube if I do that. Okay. Let's, let's um, while they can't hear us, and we can just talk to our intent, let's just say how much I hate those people that are sucking us, just watching our lectures and not coming. I don't hate them. Patrick, man. What's that? Nothing. What's that? Nothing. No, no. I, I don't think you're... Is the microphone working or still not working? No, it's okay. Thurston, have we got sound? I don't know. They caught me. Okay. I was just joking about hating you. Okay. Uh, one, thank you very much. You've got a 50-50 chance. All right. <laughs> now let's, um, I'm, I'm going to go out of the room and I want someone to change one of those digits. There you go. <laughs> change one. Just change one. I don't care which one it is, but change it really quick and then tell me when I can come back in. Well, that sounds like so. <laughs> Not that one. Yeah. Two in there. Like I can actually hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, two. Ignore them. Just do which one you want yourself. Listen to your inner voice. Is it done? Just do one. Yeah, rub this one. <laughs> Now. <laughs> okay, let's check. You only change one, because if you change two, I'm dead. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to work out which one it is. So first of all, we're going to just double check all our parity bits. Let's check the first parity bit. Let's count those. One. I'm just going to go one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So I'm just recording whether it's odd or even. One. Zero. Still say it's a zero. One. Zero, zero. So that's correct. So parity bit one is correct. Already now we've narrowed it down to half of them. In fact, I know it's going to be that one or that one if, if this is what's happening. Okay. Uh, and now let's do parity bit number two, uh, the green one. So that's one, zero, 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 zero. Oh, one, one, sorry, zero. So that's correct as well. That also had uh, a total sum that was even. And now I'm going to do the um, orange one. Zero, 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 one, zero. So that's correct as well. <laughs> that's very strange. <laughs> so what one haven't I done? Uh, uh, eight. Eight. Is that the one I... Is that the one I haven't done? One, uh, zero, one, zero. 